Welcome back to Adventures with Rosie. Now what are we doing today, Chelsea? Today we are going to harvest our pumpkin patch. Mm, we're going to see if we're going to make any money from our backyard side hustle, our pumpkin side hustle. <laughs> So typically we want to wait until the vine and the stalks have completely dried right off but it is still quite wet here at the moment so we want to harvest these now and get them someplace dry where they're not sitting on the wet ground so they don't rot um, and we would like to ideally harvest the stalk as far away from the pumpkin as we can so that when it dries up it's going to dry up nicely and not affect the pumpkin and make it rot when, when it's in storage. I don't want to the pumpkin. Oh no! That's what I didn't want to happen. Get, get out. Get out. Nice. So there are literally pumpkins all through there. Um, all through that pile. And there are some holes in this pile because remember this was all kind of just logs and then when the guys um, scraped all these sticks up, all the slash up from our pine trees. A lot of the topsoil was taken and dumped and, and, and mixed in, but there are holes so occasionally you walk up there and you, you put you know, your foot in a hole and disappear down into the pile. All sorts of full of um, rabbits and we've seen rats in here as well. So kind of part of the reason why we want to get these pumpkins up off the ground. We don't want them to rot in here because it probably won't help the rat problem. Um, so yeah, well I guess we've got to climb around up there. We've got to try and take the ones out today that we need to take out whilst not damaging the other ones. We did plant another pile down where we had pumpkins last year. And I didn't really think, but we, we put three plants in the crown pumpkins. They're growing pretty well. And then I let the sheep in that paddock and the sheep decided to walk all over the top of the pumpkin stalks. So luckily sheep can eat the pumpkins. So I might just smash those ones open um, for them. They didn't quite grow. To, to maturity because they were broken off the vines early. Should have thought about that. But yeah, I'm gonna see how many we can get out today, put them in the shed, just rinse and repeat over the next few weekends. <laughs> so these ones seem to do the best on our property. These are the Austrian Hullus and they kind of start out a little bit more green probably more like this one and then you start to see these yellow stripes come in and these came up really quick on the property um, more like faster than anything faster than the crowns last year um, there are also a lot of these that are quite small like sort of you know a baseball size that are still around but because those vines are dying off they have not had the chance to kind of you know fully grow but yeah I think that's definitely the majority is is the Austrian hullus um, and then the rather ugly triangles. <laughs> this, I don't know how to explain this pumpkin other than it looks like three pumpkins in one. Um, it's weird looking. Apparently they're nice, apparently they're good eating but uh, yeah strange looking pumpkin. Almost the same sort of skin like a crown but um, in kind of three sections. Triangle I guess, three, three pumpkins. Um, we've got some monster ones that Charles is just picking out of the top of the pile so a lot of those, a lot of the hullus, quite a few butternuts as well. Um, and yeah, they seem to just pop up quite late in the, in the whole process. And then they were tiny little things and then they just sprung up. So a few of those as well to kind of round it out. <laughs> Look at that. Beauty. Looks like a bum. <laughs> a weird three-sided bum. How's that for an absolute monster? Look at that. It's like three pumpkins in one. Weird looking, eh? <laughs> so the most aesthetically pleasing looking pumpkins, in my opinion, are these uh, red kuri. Um, quite a nice looking pumpkin. Kind of screams like American um, pumpkin that you'd carve or something like that. They're a little bit smaller. Um, we maybe only have a dozen of these. They're a bit sort of slower going. They start out a really neat um, yellow and then they turn orange. So, got maybe half a dozen harvested today and they're still going strong up there and still growing so I think we'll leave them in. Chelsea's just finding giant triangle after giant triangle up there. Um, 
and doing a bit of weeding while she goes. If you thought those triangles were ugly, um, there's a few blue hubbards growing in here. They are a weird, weird shape. They have a kind of an end, like two ends to the pumpkin. This one's an absolute monster in there, bigger than my head. Um, but the vine, still quite green, so we're going to leave that for maybe another week or two. Um, I think there's only a couple of these hiding around. Don't know how many plants we put in, but yeah, it's so ugly. All warty and bumpy. Don't know what they're like for eating. Guess we'll find out. All right, so that first load was about 30, and we've got about another 20 in the trailer now. 50 odd pumpkins. Um, there's maybe, maybe another 10, 15 still up there. So yeah, bit of a lean season. I was kind of hoping for maybe 100 pumpkins. Uh, if we sell them for five to six dollars, then you know, five, six hundred bucks. I think we've talked in, the, in a previous video about how we're, um, we're off to Rarotonga in September. So the pumpkins and the pine cones we've been selling are trip money, basically. So we've been putting it actually all in a piggy bank, <laughs> like kids. Um, most people have been paying cash for uh, for the pine cones. We've put it in a piggy bank, so we're going to crack it open and see how much Rarotonga money we've got. Um, now the weather uh, has the season, the weird season, I suppose, and the cold weather early has done this to a few pumpkins. So this would have been one of those big blue hubbards that now looks... A little bit like a testicle. I don't know if you can say testicle on YouTube actually. Looks a bit strange um, and some of them some of them didn't grow at all so the testicles and the ones that didn't grow will go to the sheep. Chelsea also found some caramel caramel that we forgot about. We thought the vine had died off and then when it did properly die off there was some hiding underneath yeah. so you meant to cut them when they're about about that size. About that size. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh this is a caramel caramel I think. It is. Yeah this is caramel caramel so this is kind of like a squash and you're supposed to pick them probably that size. Chelsea's been making chutneys and relishes out of this. Um, which is quite nice actually, caramel caramel chutney. But yeah, if you let them get that big they kind of go a bit more like a like a marrow almost. So we'll give these to the sheep. Um, so yeah, there's a whole bunch more big triangles in there. Some of those beautiful red curries as well. So we'll come back down in a couple of weeks or a week or so and pick the rest. Clean them all up, some of them need to wash and then put them at the gate and see if we make any money. So we just realized in the sheep paddock here is where we had the crowns. Um, so we put three crown pumpkin plants in here and then I think like I said earlier I let the sheep in and um, they proceeded to walk all over this and sit on them and everything. We got two crown pumpkins, that's all. Last year we had 40, this year two. <laughs> Weird season and uh, apparently Plants don't like it if sheep sort of walk around on top of them. I think only having a crop, couple of crowns isn't the end of the world because at the moment in the supermarket they're quite cheap. They're only five dollars for a whole crown pumpkin so we can't really compete with that you know. Um, we could sell them for three or four I suppose. Actually I think I've got some photos here I'll put in of what the pumpkin prices were off season last year around Christmas time. The pumpkin gets insanely expensive here in New Zealand I guess because it's out of season but people want to buy it for their Christmas dinner but we saw crowns go from like five to twelve to fifteen dollars in the supermarket. I've uh, always keep an eye on them now that I've got a keen interest in uh, in pumpkins. I keep an eye on it whenever I go to the supermarket, but the price just fluctuates like crazy. Um, they seem to be quite cheap at the moment, and maybe as the weather gets cooler, the price will go up. So yeah, we do have some varieties we just don't get at the supermarket as well. Like most of our supermarkets, pumpkins are crown and butternut. I've never seen. Um, you know the red cooties or triangles at the supermarket or those um those austrian hullists so we'll see what we can sell them for but we need to wait a couple of weeks i'll catch up with you in a few weeks we'll come and pick the last of the pumpkins do a bit of a tally see how we're going all right well not a bad haul behind us here of pumpkins um not amazing seeing we put so many plants in the ground but today's the day we're going to take them up to the gate um, put a post up on just a facebook you know local facebook page to sell them so yeah we'll see how we go we've got some good variety to put up at the gate one thing we did find out today which is a little bit funny is that these uh austrian hullless ones these stripy ones they are not growing for the flesh for eating they're grown for the seeds they have a big flat seed in them and most people grow the pumpkins um when they start to get the yellow stripes like those ones that they smash them open, soak the seeds, um, and then fry them and eat them. They have a big, big flat seed. Apparently they're really nice for eating, but they're not so great for roasting <laughs> or putting in pumpkin soup to the point where some sites we've read said uh, 
We are yet to find an animal or a human that enjoys eating the flesh of an Austrian hullus. So, hmm, we thought we were going to sell them because that's what we've got the most of. So I think we'll just sell them cheap. We'll put a sign out. These are for eating of the seeds. Um, and next year we won't bother. They look cool. They grew really quickly. <laughs> but probably the crowns and the triangle is where the market's at in terms of pumpkins. So we'll chuck a few at the gate. We'll chuck a post up on Facebook and we'll see how we go. Well, it's a couple of weeks later now. And since our first harvest, maybe three weeks, uh, end of April. And the weather here is getting a lot cooler. Uh, we've had a few more frosts now. We've had some quite cold nights, gray and gloomy days like today. So I'm going to harvest the rest of the pumpkins. There's about, there's maybe 10 or 12 left in the pile. I'm going to harvest this big boy, this blue hubbard I was talking about. How's that for an absolute monster? Quite possibly the ugliest pumpkin you've ever seen, right? Let's see what I was talking about with the two ends it's got. Very strange. We only got one of these in the end. Uh, we got that tiny, small, runty, shriveled one. And this monster. <laughs> Well, the rest of them are harvested on the shelf. We have had a, a steady stream of them going out the door actually. So we've put them up at our gate and um, over the last couple of weeks and just put a bit of a Facebook post up. And people have been buying like six or eight or four, like buying sort of bulk lots of them, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously the Austrian hullus, they're a bit of a write off. Like I said earlier, we're only eating those for the seeds. Chelsea did actually break a few of those open. She soaked the seeds took the skin off the seeds or the shell off the seeds and then fried the seeds. Bit of work. They were nice, but bit of work. Um, I think the winners for us, uh, I guess these ones have been flying out the door, the red kuri. Um, they look quite nice, right? I think all in all we got, where's my notes? Eight of those. We've been selling uh, these for seven or eight dollars, depending on the size. Um, and we've sold yeah, five or six of those. So we've got eight of these total. Um, the triambles have been doing awesome. All in all, we've got 24 triangles of uh, various sizes. We've also been selling these for $8. Um, quite big, you know, pretty huge pumpkin. Um, they seem quite nice for eating. And yeah, they seem to sort of grow well. And I think maybe they're similar to a crown. Um, we only got two crowns in the end, and they were the first two we sold. So go figure. I think next year when we do this again, we're not going to worry about the hullus, obviously. We won't worry about the butternuts because they're a bit hit and miss. We'll just focus on the triambles um, and crowns I think. If you did a big batch of these and you know if you did if you could grow a couple hundred of these next year five bucks each thousand bucks that'd be pretty good. Um, yeah and we won't worry about trying to grow the weirdest looking blue hubbards you've ever seen because for some reason people aren't buying this one. I don't know why. Maybe I need to reduce the price. Um, but yeah Butternuts and crowns we sold for $5, we sold the triangles and the red kuri for 8 And uh, probably sold $120 worth of pumpkin so far. Um, all in all, if we ran those numbers against what's on the shelf, excluding the hullus, we've probably got about three, $350 worth of pumpkin. So I was aiming for a thousand bucks or something like that, but we'll take $350. Um, it didn't cost us much other than a few packets of seeds. And that money will all go towards a holiday later in the year. So. So a bit of trial and error for our first pumpkin season. Um, not as big a side hustle as I would have hoped, but that's fine. We'll try again next year. Um, and it was also good to have something planted on that pile. Nice to see all the flowers out there. And, and actually it's probably broken that pile down a bit now. So if we do the same in the next few seasons, hopefully that sort of pile just keeps breaking down. All those sticks and stumps underneath are rotting. I don't really want to get a digger in here and start trying to sort that pile out and spread dirt around and have burn offs and things like that. So we might as well plant something on it that's going to eat its way through it, I suppose. So yeah, we'll leave this video here. A um, bunch more videos coming out. I've got the digger coming next weekend again, which I'm excited about. Uh, that little ride on digger. Hoon around the lawn. Uh, I've got a zip line still to put up for the kids. We've got tons of planting to do. Um, we've got a couple of other projects lined up and also our subdivision project down the bottom, which is ticking over. Hopefully we're getting close to maybe completing the subdivision. I need to build some sheep yards as well. So we've got plenty coming up. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching.